record. All right, good afternoon, everybody. This is Calvin Butler with the RBBS Logistics Learning Center and the National Dispatchers um, Network. Tonight is Tuesday night, 8 p.m., so it's Tuesday night spot training. It's going to be about 40 to 45 minutes long. It's not going to be very long. And tonight we're going to be um, going over the terms, commonly used terms and phrases and words that are used in trucking and dispatching and shipping. And we're going to try to hit some of the commonly used ones and give you all some definitions. And we're going to be asking that you all kind of, you know, kind of um, let us know what you're hearing in, in, in terms of the terms being used. And we'll see if we can find the answers for you and show you all where you all can find those at in our logistics library. All right. Um, video has started. Let's go ahead and start sharing my screen. Okay. And when you all log into the back office, Try to go over to mydispatcher.org, and you need to go over to um, the logistics library. I'm going to put the link up, and that way you all can um, get to it. Let's do this with the... Just this library. Go ahead and send this over to, to, to you all right now in the chat. All right, there it is. That's where you all need to be. Okay, you need to be in the logistics library. Now, everyone can see my screen. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. All right. For those of you who all do, who don't know, um, our members get to use um, what we call our our logistics, our uh, trucking industry library, and we call it our logistics library. Um, we have um, links to certain um, glossary terms and things like that, so that if they need to know anything about what terms are, or or just catch up on trucking news, or 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 want to share some you know some insightful blogs, they can come back here into the logistics um, library and pull up the trucking industry library with all the terms and terminology and um, there's little you no know, um, um, there's things of note like freight lanes and and trucking news and you know the whole bunch of blogs and things like that how to you know um, 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 profit from cheap freight and all those types of things that they have access to just one of the you know many tools and resources that we provide for our students um, uh, quick announcement, uh, you know, we did post up a lot of new videos in the um, on the YouTube channel. I'm going to be placing them in, into the back office um, tonight. So by tomorrow, all these will be up. Um, as you all can see here, we did a video showcasing our new downtown office space and everything. Um, and we did that one. And we um, actually we did two on the tour of the downtown office space. We put up um, about seven new videos last night. Um, um, winter is coming, which was our latest operational training video. We put up the um, last week's um, um, two to spot training, and we also put up um, two other um, operational training videos here as well. RBS gives you more, and we put up a Q a Q and a and a little short, brief um, um, video that tells you about what's going on with us. Then we had another. Um, operational training um, that we put up. Uh, Hello, I am an expert, uh, and, and this is on the sales process. Yes. And then we put up one on, put up another spot training for the curriculum. So we put up quite a few videos here last night, um, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine new videos. So make your way over to our um, um, homepage on the um, the RBBS um, 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 channel on YouTube, and you can view all of those. We'll be adding those videos to our back office site in the video library, so you all will be able to access them there as well. All right, let's, let's go and get into the training real quick. We're not going to waste any time. All right, um, trucking terms, shipping terms, uh, terms that you someone has come up and said something to you about, and you didn't quite know what it was. 
let's hear what you all got. Uh, what have you all been hearing out there that you want to know more about on what those terms are and what, and what those things mean? And, um, what, and more importantly, what do they mean to you all? Does, does anybody have any terms that, that have been thrown at them and they um, quite didn't know what it means? Okay. Well, while you all are thinking about that, we are going to go ahead and um, go over to the different areas here. Okay. Now, we have a terminology, um, a gloss a glossary of terms, and then we have a dictionary of trucking terms, and then we have our freight shippers dictionary. Ships are different lingo, per se, than truckers may use. So you you may find something the shipping terms are different, <laughs> okay, uh, from what how it's used in the tr trucking, okay. So, if you're in the terminology more of like um, you know phrases or things that are that are used in in the trucking industry, uh, we're gonna go over some ones that I think that you all uh, may come in contact with more often than not. Um, you know things of that nature. Uh, so we're gonna pull this one up first. Let it give time to load up. Okay, glossary area of terms, as you all can see here. Now with this one, basically you just kind of stroll down and you can um, see all the terms and stuff. The trucking Industry terminology, a glossary of terms. Um, okay, now some of the stuff we're, gonna, we're just gonna go down on some of this stuff, and and just ones that you all we hear um, most commonly. Um, here's one: authorized carrier. I'm sure you all heard that. That's a person or company authorized by the U.S. Department of Transportation to engage in the transportation of property as a common or contract carrier. Now, why is that that important? Because you do have, they're not, well, there are quite a few carriers out there who are not authorized, okay? Um, guys who will purchase a truck, and they may have a DOT number, but they don't have an authority, okay? Now, you know, just because they have a truck and they have a DOT number um, and an MC number does not mean that they have an authority to operate that truck you know, in the industry as picking up and delivering freight, okay? You see a lot of guys that post their stuff online saying that I'm looking for someone that I can run under their authority. It's called these gentlemen, they have the truck, they do have a DOT number, but they haven't gotten their authority, okay? So if, if someone has a truck but no authority, they are not an authorized carrier. An authorized carrier is one who has an authority, or one who is operating under um, someone else's authority. Okay. Um, can I ask a you question? You? Sure, go ahead. Uh, um, would that be considered like a, as a leasee too, or? Well, leases. Well, that's different. It's a little bit different, but it is the same. Um, okay. A a uh, when you go into a lease, you have to own your truck, or if you're gonna be leasing the truck. Uh, you either own your truck or you're leasing a truck from the company. Most of the time, you are leasing the truck from a company or you're leasing it from some type of leasing program. So let's say like if you're with Western Express or with, you know, uh, <coughs> um, J.B. Hood or somebody and you go through their lease prop, you go through their lease program, that's the next step before you get to own an operator, okay, because you have the company drivers, then you have the lease, um, you have the lease drivers, the lease operators, and then you have the owner ops, okay? Now, within a company, the owner ops within a company generally don't have their own authority. That's why they're, you know, they're doing what's called leasing their truck on to their owner op program, which means they own the truck, so they would in turn be leasing their truck on to that company's owner op program. <clears throat> so, but they do own the truck. But they are putting that truck with that company. That's called leasing the truck on. Now, there's something called the company lease drivers. These are people who don't own a truck. They are leasing the truck with the option to buy the truck. They do not have any type of authority, but they do have a DOT number. Okay? <clears throat> but they are lease drivers or are, 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 
they don't have as much control as the owner operator does. Okay, owner operators usually are they're allowed to find their own freight. Okay, if you are owner operator within these within these company, uh, these big companies, you are usually allowed to find your own freight, and you do not have to accept any load coming from that company dispatcher. Lease operators, on the other hand, most companies do not allow lease operators to find their own loads. Okay, you do get all your loads from the um, the dispatcher, but you have control over which loads you want to run, and you can refuse a load at any time if you are a lease operator, because you are still responsible for your lease payment. And you got to make your lease payment just as if you was making the truck note. Okay, all right. Um, but and you do receive a higher grade of pay <coughs> for the loads you run. Okay, you'll be paid just like a company um, driver is, but you may be getting like uh, two dollars and four cents a mile. You know, you know, just across the board, right? For the loads you run, or if you if you're running short load, or if you're running you no know, long loads, you may be getting like a dollar, a dollar, a dollar seventy five a mile, or a dollar twenty a mile, or whatever okay. the case may be. All right. Well, well, I just came back in the house from come. Like, most company drivers the only earn about what? Anywhere. From, most company drivers earn um, anywhere from twenty eight cents per mile up to maybe fifty six, maybe fifty eight cents per mile. Is that, that's the most I've seen a company driver earn. It's around fifty six to fifty eight cents per mile. <coughs> Lease operators will generally earn anywhere from a dollar up to about two fifty. Or almost 260 per mile. I've seen some where lease operators can earn as much as like 290, and equals three dollars per mile. And I think Western Express has one where you can earn almost four dollars a mile if you're running very short loads, like you're just doing the empty trailer moves and you're running them in short distance, less than 100 miles, and they pay you like four dollars a mile for uh, for the loads that's running less than 100 miles if you are leasing. Okay, so. But anyway, but, but at, at either rate. That's what authorized carry means. Now, if any of y'all have, have any terms you want us to, to look up, feel free to jump in and let us know what those terms are, and we'll look them up and um, see if we can get. I got one more question for, yeah, you, for you, if you don't okay. mind. All right. Um, up. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I just came back in the house, and I was at Royal Farms, and I saw two trailers. Um, I saw um, one with some emblems on it, and one didn't have any emblems on it, but it was like the same type of flatbed trader. So one of them probably was a leasee, and one of them was an owner operator. That's what I'm assuming. What do you mean, like it had like uh, a trucking like a company? company name on it, company logo on it, and the other one well, was like I just mean, plain. Well, you know. it 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 could be either or. Okay. Or right, because if you're owner operator, a lot of owner operators put their company logos on their truck. Okay. You know, I That's had my true. company logo on my truck. You know, That's true. You know, when I, when I became an operator, but it was just me. <laughs> I don't own one truck. That's when I was driving, but I had our BBS <laughs> transport LLC up there with the our BBS symbol and everything. You know, no, 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 you know it was up there. Um, generally speaking, if it's a well-known company like Warner, um, Snyder, JB Hood, uh, K L M, um, you know. Things like that, uh, Swift, uh, you know, um, Covenant, you know, things of that nature, uh, Heartland Express, you know, uh, you know, all these, you know, um, companies, um, Stevens, um, you know, anything like that. If it's got those type of names, recognizable brands, and usually they have written on the side of the truck that says lease operator, and it, and if it's an owner operator, it will have owner operator. Okay, okay you answer my question. All right, see, like, thank you for that. This night and all that stuff, and it doesn't have anything on it. It's gonna have like that's gonna be like a company driver. If it's just the company name and not, nothing on that door that says lease operator or owner operator, those are probably just company drivers. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you. All right, uh, all right. Of course, everyone should know what a bike haul is. Um, if, if you don't, because you're gonna hear that a lot. You're gonna hear this term bike haul, bike. Haul. Is a load that returns the truck driver and or the vehicle back to its home base. You find loads going out, I can tell you I need a backhaul. 
They want you to find them a little coming back to where they just left from. Or, or, or they've been out for a while. They may call you and say, hey, I, I need a bike call back home. Okay? That's basically what that is. You find them a little bike to their home state. Okay? Or to their home city. Um, 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 <laughs> now, some of you may get asked the question, do you um, dispatch for bed buggers? Okay? <laughs> now, if y'all don't know what a bed bug is, basically just um, um, a carrier that moves household goods. Because you know you have two different types of carrier authorities. Okay, you have the household goods carrier authority, and then you have the regular trucking, um, you know, um, 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 over the road um, carrier authority. Okay, household goods can only transport household goods. These are these are or or, or the movers. You no, know, the movers who move people you know, across country and things like that. You have to have a special type of authority in order to um, to um, transport household goods. Okay, and those are referred to as bed buggers. Okay, um, just so you know. You also may hear you may hear bird, um, which means if you call up a a owner operator and you say. Um, Are you available to, uh, for low right now? And they may say, "Well, I've got about another eight hours in my berth." Okay, that's your that's another term that they use for the sleeping compartment behind the cab. Okay, in your sleeper berth. There are some people. Um, most people will refer to it as sleeping as sleeper berth, but some people will just say berth, you know, or or bereft, or, or however you want to pronounce it. But, they, but people just say berth, you know, for short. But it's not. B I R T H, but it's like breath. B E R T H. Okay. All right. Of course, the bill of landing is the transportation document that the contract or carriage containing the terms and conditions between the shipper and the carrier. <coughs> bill of landing is usually given to you um, at the drop. Um, once you drop the load off, the receiving shipper then gives you what's called a bill of landing. Okay, B O L. It's commonly referred to as just B O L. Okay. Um, sometimes you you get asked by the broker, what's the B O L number? Okay. Um, you know, so you, that, that, and that's your bill of landing number. That's the number assigned by the carrier to identify the bill of landing. Then sometimes you hear, what's the B O M? Okay. The B O M is going to be your bill of material, and that's a structured list. Of all the materials or parts and quantities needed to produce a particular finished project, assembly, subassembly, or manufactured part, whether purchased or not. <coughs> okay, now you all, every now and then you might hear that. You're not going to hear it too often. Okay, um, just find your stuff. You don't need to know. Uh, you don't, you're not going to hear that a whole, a um, whole lot. Um, blind side as a as a as a dispatcher, you hope you don't hear this, <coughs> okay? Um, um, you know, um, you hope you don't hear too much about blind side because that's usually when the when the drivers are talking about somebody um, <laughs> who is driving a truck, like say the right side of the truck or combination unit that the driver cannot see without the use of the mirrors. Like if you're packing in into your you know your thing to to unload. The driver's side is your sighted side because you got a mirror. You can look right in that driver's side, and when you turn, you can see where the trailer's going. But if you're turning, if you're backing in to something that's behind you, and you're backing in from the other side, okay, you are not going to be able to see the hole when you're backing in on the, you know, um, into a um, into a slot. If you're looking on your left side, you're trying to see the hole. Well, you're not going to see that hole because your trailer is turning that way, and and you can't see it. That's called blindside backing. Okay, which basically means you got to stop, get out, <laughs> observe, get back in. Right? You know, you know, you got to do that. You know, you got to do your, you know, you got to do your goal. Now, does everybody know what gold stands for? That's what I need to probably find on here. Something called gold. Um, gold is when the 
and it may not have it on here, but it, it, it would be in fucking. Go is get out of the truck and look. Okay? Go. Says we get out of the truck and look. Uh, and as you inside a blind side um 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 uh, loading when you're trying to do a blind side loading. Okay? Um uh, nobody's got any terms that they want me to go over that you may hear? Okay. I got Bob Tail. Uh Bob Tail is when the yeah, hold on a second. Bob Tail is when the truck is just running by itself. There's no trailer. Okay, tractor is operating without a trailer. Also a deadhead for carriers that do dropping hooks. You often see them bobtail, which means they drop a trailer that was already loaded because they don't have a trailer of their own. Then they got a bobtail to go pick up another loaded trailer somewhere else. All right, now go ahead with your question. What is the uh, term lane referring to? What is what now? Lane. Like you're trying to find a, a good lane for your pretty oh, driver. Oh, the lane? Uh, let's see, that might be in transport. Might be in this one. Hold on here. Lanes. Uh, no, it's not going to be in this one. Hold on, hold on. It's probably going to be in the one that's for trucking. Give me a second. Trucking terms. Or it might be in shipping terms. Let's try shipping first. I like this one because I can just go to ALS, click on it. Line haul, loose. Nope, it's not in that one, so let's try the trucking one. Dictionary trucking terms. Okay, it might be on the trucking lanes. Hold on here. Or on the freight lane. Let's try freight lanes. Then we'll also try shipping lanes. Freight, freight, freight tech. Nope. Let's try shipping lanes. Shipping order. Okay. What are we looking under? Uh, let's hold on. Shipping. If I can't find it, I would just tell y'all what it is. But it's in here somewhere. Let's see. Someone's got to have it. Shipper, sleeper, straight. This. Freight lanes. <laughs> Commonly used uh, route or number for regions. For which region are you running? Which lane are you running? The you know <coughs> um, the Florida. To California lanes, or you're running the Texas lanes, or if you're running the Northwest lanes, the East lanes, or the, the or the South to South lanes, you're running the North to South lanes, you're running the the East Coast lanes, the the Southwest lanes, the Northwest lanes, um, the Midwest lanes. Those are just different regions. That's all they are. Okay. So when you hear someone talk about the lanes, they are basically just referring to the different commonly used routes that are most common that truckers travel. Like, you have a lot of refrigerated freight that originates up in the Midwest. But the lane that it runs is running the lanes that's coming down where? All the way down to Florida. Because they're running a lot of the frozen foods, the Omaha steaks and the and the, and the, and the, and, um, the seafood and stuff. They're running the steaks and stuff down, and they'll pick up some stuff along the way, and they'll have, they'll have maybe five 
stops. They got three drops and two pickups, or two pickups and three drops. Well, no, or three pickups and two drops. And they're traveling all the way from the Midwest, but they're running down, and yeah, they got all points coming down to, to Florida. You see what I'm saying? They'll stop here on the way down and, and drop half their load or, or drop a quarter of their load. Then they'll go somewhere else and they'll pick up, you know, a quarter of a load. Then they'll go a little bit further and they'll drop half the load. Then they'll go a little bit further, you know, another three or 400 miles, and then they'll pick up, you know, a half a truck load. Then they go somewhere and they drop all their load. Then they'll stop somewhere and pick up a full load. Then run that down to Miami and drop the final bit down there at a restaurant or a series of restaurants. Okay? No That's business. called a lane. Okay? And then they've got to find what? A bike haul that runs them back up that same lane. Okay? That's going to run them back up that same lane to get them back to where? Their money load. Because coming down on something like that that has multiple stops, has multiple drops and pickups, <clears throat> those type of loads would generally pay um, $7,500 to ten dollars or $12,000. One way trip down, because it's gonna take them all week to run that load. Okay, it generally would take you all week. That's the only thing you would run that week is running those down from Midwest to Miami, Florida, or from New York to California, or from California to um, to Orlando. That's a lane, because you because Disney, Walt Disney. They ship stuff from one Disney World to Disneyland all the time. So that's a lane that that is commonly run, and, and it's straight I-10. You get on I-10 in California, and you get off I-10 down in Orlando. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just a straight run. You know, you're running it straight up and down. You're running it all, all the way down, up, jump on that, and you get off I-10, you jump right on 75, go right on to Orlando. Jump on 75, jump back on that. Or I think you can jump on I-10 right there, uh, just coming out of Orlando, too, and just run it straight up. Okay? But those are called your lanes. Another good lane would be the Nevada, um, 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 the, 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 the Nevada to Oklahoma. It's, it's a shorter lane, but that's still a lane, too. But don't let that fool you because Nevada is a big state. In other words, when you're coming from California going to Texas, you have to fuel up before you leave California. Because when you hit that, there's a desert stretch, there's a lane there. There are no, there are no gas stations. There are no truck stops. There's nothing, there's nowhere for you to stop. All through Nevada, when you hit that long stretch, when you're leaving California, there's a long stretch. It's about, oh, 500 miles, 600 miles, so you, so you better top off before you leave because you're going to be one of those trucks that, they, that you see on the side of the road. And they're calling in for a fuel uh, tow. <laughs> you know, they got to get those fuel tows because um, they ran out of gas. You know, they didn't top off before they left, okay? So make sure you top off all your tanks before you leave in California or before you leave in, um, 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 what is it, Oklahoma. Because it's Nevada, oh, yeah. Because the first thing you're gonna hit is probably Oklahoma when you're coming out of that Nevada, uh, that long stretch, okay, between Texas and California. All right, but that's all the lane is, okay. Thanks for the question, um, um, what's some Calvin. Other stuff? Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain what a way station is? Um, like, how does that station. happen uh, with okay. the trucking? All right, that's definitely going to be in the trucking one. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, way station. And how does those tractor trailers or trucks get selected for a way station? Oh, uh, all right. A lot of times how they get selected is uh, lack of money. <laughs> I hate to tell you all that, but I will tell you something. Covenant <laughs> never gets pulled into a way station. Covenant Transport. I was with Covenant Transport and never. The only time I got pulled into a way station is when I was on the trainer truck and they scheduled one just so I can go through the training of going in, presenting my papers and, you know, all that stuff. They checking my license and all that stuff. So that was just so we would know, know what it was. But mm -hmm. <laughs> other than that, 
covenant never gets pulled in. Covenant has this thing called these um these um the bypass. Like you have one called the Florida Pass, you got one called right. the, the Northern Pass, you got one called you know, whatever, whatever, but it's an electronic system that they set up in the truck and when you come into the way station they got these monitors and these signal things. It beams the signal down to the truck. If that bad boy comes off green, beep, 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 and then it shows green, you just keep right on going. I okay. never, after crisscrossing the United States about seven times, and, I went, and I've been in every state in the United States at least three times, driving with Covenant, and never had to pull into a way station. Because we mm-hmm. always got that green light. Now, why is that? Two, two reasons. Covenant has an outstanding safety record. Okay. okay. If you have a great safety record, chances are you won't get pulled into a what you call it, okay, as a company. And Covenant got a whole bunch of money, <laughs> okay? That's the main reason. They got a whole bunch of money. Mm. All right? They pay okay. lobbyists and all this other stuff so that their trucks generally never have to stop. Let me tell you something else. Have you ever seen a Walmart truck in, at a way station? No. Exactly. <laughs> That's why. Money. <laughs> Walmart pays the cost to be the boss. <laughs> and you would never see you would never see a Walmart truck going through a waste station. Because Walmart, they're on a time you know, they're on a time crunch. They move so mm-hmm. much freight. They're on a time crunch. You hardly ever see an Amazon truck at a waste station. Because they move so much freight. And time is money. So they pay all this money to, um, to the lobbyists to lobby for them to never have to stop at the waste station. That's, they have those little things inside where it checks their truck e- electronically. So when it runs by, it pulls up on the uh, DOT person's screen in there, and it, it's pretty much, it, it tells them what you got, you know, what your load is, you know, uh, what your safety rating is, what company you're running for, all that stuff is right there. So they just bypass green light okay. beep, beep, keep that on truck mm. okay but Thank everybody you. else <laughs> you gotta pull in <laughs> all right so when i was on the operator and it was just me you know rbbs transport but i think i got pulled into every way station there was because i was a new carrier you know not a real history there you see what i'm saying and just me and one just me one truck okay so you know you're going to have to stop at every way station, right, when you're like that. All right? All right. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. No problem. I had saw something on here else that I wanted to show you all. Who did blind side? Uh, oh, CPM. Now, y'all know what CPM stands for. So you're gonna, y'all are going to hear that term a lot, CPM, CPM. Since per mile. That's the per mile rate at which drivers are paid. Okay, y'all are gonna hear that a lot. CPM, what's the CPM? What's the CPM? You no, know, how much money you need to move your truck? You're gonna have a dyno. It's on your um your profile sheet. You know what's what CPM do you need? That's what that is. Okay. All right, you all may hear someone say, "Well, I have a cab over." Okay, um, which means they have one of those um, cabs that's over the engine. You don't see very many of them anymore. It used to be all the time. That that's the one that looks like a, just a straight box. Y- y'all seen those? Yes. Okay. Old yeah, it, it, yeah, that's old school. I say old old school. You don't you don't see them no. <laughs> they ain't got no no you know no hood or bumper, and they're not. They're just shoo. <laughs> you know, like you're riding a box. Yes, not too safe. <clears throat> okay. Um. Of course, y'all know what cargo wheels and all that stuff, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna deal with that. Um, combinations. Now, you all you all may see combinations every now and then. If you're if you ever run some FedEx loads, um, brokers that have the FedEx load, they will ask you, it, "Are your drivers combination certified?" Okay, are they combination certified? Which means are they are they licensed or certified? To pull those two, because y'all see those trucks, they have like the two, have like two trailers. They may be pulling two and sometimes three trailers. Yeah, I see that all the time near the airport. 
Yeah, those are called combinations, okay? Um, mm-hmm. Truck, truck, um, tractor, coupled with one or more trailers, including semi-trailers, okay? The most I've seen is four trailers, but they kind of, but they're shorter. They're not quite, you know, you know, um, the 53 foot or 48 foot. They're like a 37 foot trailer, but you may have two, sometimes three of them. Most time, every now and then, you'll see one that's got four. But you gotta be, <laughs> you, you gotta know what you're doing to pull those bad boys. Okay. What actually? Like, does that require a CDLA, or it to be uh, qualified for something else? No, it's the same CDL, but you got to get um, um, what do they call permit? it? It's, yeah, well, it's not just a permit, but you got to have like a like you have a hazmat, and you have all this other stuff. There's a classification mm-hmm. you got to have for combination. You got to have a combination um, classification too. Okay. 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 Just, just like you know. Uh, some drivers are, are hazmat qualified, and some are not. Some guys have twit cards, some don't. You know that type of thing. So it, it's just okay. another um, uh, expertise um, mm-hmm. um, certification you, you got to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, b- 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 containers. You always you always hear that sometimes. You know, mm-hmm. uh, if you maybe ask, can your um, you, a lot of the flatbed drivers they'll ask you. Um, um, does your driver uh, can your driver haul container loads now the container loads these are are, 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 are prepackaged trailers a little small like the ones that come off the um, the ships those shipping containers and y'all have seen them they look like a, and they're basically just a shipping container right it's, and they're gonna, normally they're the short ones okay but they basically you put off. You can only carry them with a flatbed that has the the um, the hooks on it. Uh, 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 the way you can place the hooks, and then you can lock them in. But what's going to happen is they have a crane picks the container up off the ship, or where it's being held at. You pull your truck up and your trailer up. The crane will come around and it will lower that that container onto the flatbed. Boom, trailer. You can probably put about two one. of them. <laughs> yeah, you probably put about two of them on there, and then they got these locking mechanisms where they, yep. where they, you know, they chain them down and where they got these locks on them, and they just clump and they clamp them in, and they are locked mm-hmm. in. They're not going anywhere. And you, they may put a strap on a chain over it, but usually if it's got that locking mechanism on it, they'll lock like three on this side, three on that side, and one at the top, and then one towards the middle, and, and same thing. So, that, so they're locked in, and that container's not going anywhere. And all that flatbed is doing is taking it to a location. They come in with another crane or something, and they, and they pick it, and they unlock it, pick it up, and they take it off the truck. Boom! And they put an empty one on, lock it down, and then he runs that one back. He usually takes a full one and runs the empty one back. Okay, those are called containers. Okay, as they say here, shipping containers, one giant box about 20 to 40 feet long that will fit. Um, in ships, holes, and can also be carried by rail or truck. Mm-hmm. Some containers are lighter and longer and are you are only used in rail and road transportation. Okay? Container chassis, you will hear that sometimes. Okay? It's a trailer designed to carry containers. Okay, because they ask you, does your driver have a chain of chassis trailer? Okay, so if you get asked that, that's what that's going to be. Okay, um, you ought to have to deal with you. this. You know, if you're a truck driver, you have to deal with what's called a creeper gear, but you don't have to worry about that. That's the lowest gear that you can get into if the truck can still move with the extra power is needed. Uh, deadhead, now, and y'all are going to hear that a lot. Mm-hmm. Deadhead is a truck with no cargo. Okay, you know, you know it's got a special thing down here where it says dispatcher and dispatch. <laughs> Y'all see that down there? It's all lit up for you. You know, the individual in charge of scheduling, <coughs> drivers, communications, routes, and more. Okay, dispatching, scheduling, and control of truck pickup and delivery. Now, this goes back to when a lot of people say, "Well, dispatch is not legal." If it was not legal, why they got a term for it? 
<laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, you, sometimes you got to use common sense, right? <laughs> you got to use common sense. If the industry didn't see it as something that was legal, then they wouldn't they wouldn't have a term for it, right? All right. Um, what else? Trying to see what else. E-logs. Um, you all will hear that now um, because everybody's got to have them. A computerized system to keep track of their hours of service and miles. That's basically it. The carrier and dispatcher have instant access to this information, which improves their ability to schedule drivers appropriately. Okay? So you already know somebody because why? Because you all do what? You all schedule the pickups and the, and, and, and the movement of freight. So it's, it goes without saying you need to know something about the e logs. Um, Expediting, you hear that sometimes from um, a broker, is can your carrier handle expedited freight or, or, or expedited? To accelerate transportation, expedited freight service is usually faster than normal service. An example is dispatching less than truck load qualities on a single truck for quick delivery. In other words, light loads, very, very, very light loads. Okay. That's called expedited, and you hear that you will hear that a lot. Is your can your driver handle an expedited load, which means he's got to zip. It means he got to have enough time on his clock, and he's got to be able to run that straight through, okay, without stops, okay, um, except for his required stop after eight hours, okay. Um, do, 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 do. Force dispatch. You all don't have to worry about that because you all don't do force dispatch. You don't work for a company. You're not a company dispatcher. You are an independent um, dispatcher. Guys who are company drivers, they're under what's called force dispatch. In other words, they don't have a say so. If the dispatcher says you going up that mountain to go pick up this load, you got to go up that mountain to pick up that load. Or you got to deliver this load, you know, in the ice and snow. Guess what? You got to live that load in ice and snow. That's <laughs> called force dispatch. And if you refuse it, they can fire you. And if you refuse it and you leave the truck, they can fire you and charge with truck abandonment. Or worse yet, freight abandonment. Because if you have freight, that's even worse than truck abandonment. Because now you just abandon what? The shipper's load, right? And usually if you have that on your record, eh, it's going to be very hard for you to find a job driving trucks anywhere else. Okay? Uh, hot load is going to be a rush shipment of cargo. That's just what it sounds like. Uh, you all know what the hours of service is. You know, um, that's the safety regulations governing how long and when drivers may be on duty and driving. Okay? Um, icing charge. Now, if you're dealing with a reefer, refrigerated freight, you would you would see this a lot. <clears throat> okay, a charge made for cooling perishable freight. Y'all, y'all understand what that means by that? Because you know you have to have your temperature on your reefer set at a certain temperature, depending on on what you're carrying, right? <clears throat> well, something's got to keep that refrigerated unit charged up. And they do run on fuel. There's, there's a certain type of fuel that's different from the fuel you put in your truck, you put in your reefer, to keep that that, that refrigerated freight cold. But you're going to need what's called an icing charge, too, every now and then. A charge made for cooling, pleasurable, um, uh, 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 perishable freight. So if you need to cool your, your freight down, let's say you pull into a truck stop and they have a... a an area over there that says that they can charge your reefer, right? Or they can, you know, cool your reefer down. They're going to hit you with, it's a good little fee. <laughs> it is a good little fee, okay? So that's one of the, and, and usually the carrier or the owner operator, that's their responsibility because that's your reefer truck, okay? Now, if you're a company driver and you're driving that reefer, the company pays for that, okay? It's kind of like, um, ooh, what's the other one you have? 
um, um, like lumper fees, okay, which we're about to probably get into right now. You all will see this term LTL and LTL carry. You all will see that a lot. Okay, less than truck load, carrying less cargo than a full truck load weight for a customer. Okay, thus includes shipping one package or half of a truck load. Okay, LTL carrier, a company that specializes in combining smaller shipments for multiple customers on one truck. So you may pick up a LTL load, right? But then you may find another load that's an LTL load. That's something that you all need to be aware of. If you're booking freight for someone who has an LTL load, you know if you find another load that's on that same route, they say they may be picking up a little small load in Texas, and it may be going up to PA or going up to New York. Okay? Now, that's a small load. It may be only 5,000 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. And it may be paying what? It may be paying decent. It may be paying like, you know, 1,200 bucks and run that from there to there. But guess what? You can start looking for additional LTLOs along that, that may be along that route, right? Mm -hmm. And you can book them to pick those loads up too. So there's a, there have been some, some instances where I have booked four LTL pickups on one truck because it was just little small loads, right? Each, each one of them was paying anywhere from 1200 to $2,500. <laughs> so even though the carrier was making one, one route run, he may have had four stops or, or two pickups and, and one drop or three pickups and, and, and one drop or two and two or, or whatever the combination may be. But he got paid one, two, three, four times. Now, that's not a bad payday, is it? Nope. Okay. So y'all keep that in mind when you all you know, find these carriers and LTLO because a lot of, a lot of dispatchers don't realize or they just, I don't know what they're doing, and they just missed the boat. So, but that's an opportunity to just triple up on your money. Because <laughs> you're getting the dispatch fee for each one of those ones, for, for each one of those low fees. <laughs> right? So you could be getting like $120 on one, and then uh, $200 on the next one, and then $150 on another one, and then $175, $150, you know, or, or $140 or, or $100. You know, see what I'm saying? And next thing you know, you got yourself what? Almost what? Seven eight hundred dollars on one mm -hmm. run. <laughs> okay. Can I ask you a question, so Calvin. Keep that in mind. Start? All right. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was looking at the low board, and I came across something that says PL for power only. Can you explain okay. what that is about? Power only is. Basically, is a truck that that doesn't have a trailer. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just a truck running without a trailer. Um, hold up here. That should be on here, but it's not on here. On the why it's not on here. Um, hold on here. It might be in a freight one. Uh, it's not on here. Now, and that's a commonly used term, which I don't know why it wouldn't be on some of these. And it was paying, like, good money, but it was saying that um, the location mileage was zero, and it was paying $800, but it says PL. Yeah, that's just, uh, they probably just want um, empty truck moves. Okay. I mean, empty trailer moves. Okay. That's probably what it is. So, so what's probably happening is usually when you do a power only, they're just picking up they're picking up a trailer, and these are and and, and these are, that's also um, power only. Usually picks up what's called no touch freight. Driver don't gotta touch the freight. Don't gotta you know you know open that trailer up or nothing. I mean nothing is gonna be unloaded. They're gonna just go and go and drop the trailer. They they go and, and they arrive there. The guy at the gate would give them a you know a, a a number of the parking spot or where you drop that trailer. At. You go around, you pull that trailer, and you back, you back it up in that spot. You unhook it, right? You release it, wind it down. That's it. You don't gotta 
open it up and then you just unhook it from your truck and drop it. And then when you go, and then when you drop it, they have what's called um, this little thing called. <laughs> Uh, they got these little uh, little uh, gizmos that people they, they drive and they come by and then they pick the trailer up and then they'll take the trailer and get it unloaded or whatever, whatever then they'll load it up with something else then they'll put that trailer back in the slot then the next power owner will come around and they'll tell them yeah your pickup is in you know in, in D section um, mm-hmm. um, 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 parking spot number 21 you go back and you okay. pick it up and they give you the trailer number you go find it, you hook it up to it, you pull it out, you're on your way. Well, it was paying eight hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. Those, those, that was good money. Yeah, yeah. Good I mean, money. dropping hooks you usually pay good money. I mean, yep. you know, <laughs> dropping hooks pay you good money. And look, when I was with Covenant, that's all we did was dropping hooks. Mm. Drop and hook. We never touched the freight. We go and mm. we pick up trailers that's already loaded. You have to sit there and wait for them to get loaded. The trailer was already loaded. Every now and then, we had to sit and wait for them to load the trailer. But we weren't hooked up to it. We were sitting over there in a little spot where all the power only in <laughs> trucks are. It just sitting there, you know, idling, you know, or we inside the little lounge area, whatever, whatever, waiting for them to call our number and say, hey. Oh, wow. Now, another question so ready, before I take advantage of this uh, bad opportunity. Boy, take off. Um, is there any way in the load boards where you can just pull up drivers based on their Trailer types or no? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not what spot training is. Oh, tonight. carriers, carriers based on trailer types. Yeah. Okay. It's in your on your load board. So I I see if I can show it to you um, here right just when we finish. Um, yeah, towards the end. I'm sorry, I don't want to um, interrupt. Uh, but um. But that's pretty much, you know, like I said, um, you all have a lot of uh, stuff. You, you all know what a waste station is. Um, other stuff. A way bill, you may have to, uh, that's the description of goods sent with a common carrier freight shipment. Okay, that's called a way bill. Um, um, that's pretty much it as far as the commonly used stuff, stuff that you all are going to be running into on a day-to-day basis, okay? Um, we're just about out of time anyway. But anyway, let me go and, 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 and show him where this is real quick. Let me get out of these. But remember, you can find all your terms and stuff. It's going to be in your logistics library, which is in your back office site, and you'll be able to go here and find that stuff, okay? Um, um, as far as... Uh, um, and this is going to do it for the night because spot trend is not meant to be very long. Um, I'm going to show him this real quick, and that's going to do it on the spot training. Um, your best second here. Just about every low board has a way for you to pull up just the type of, 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 of trailers you want, you know, or the type of loads you want. Okay? Um, now, you're referring to, like, a reefer load, flatbed load, right? Dry van load, uh, power only, right? No, I got that part. I understand that part doing the load boards. I was asking, is there any way you can search for carriers looking for certain trailer types? Oh, you mean oh, uh, you mean carriers looking for certain load types? No, no, no. Like, say for instance, I'm looking for a carrier that has a flatbed. I should be able to go in the system and say, look for, you know, Oh, so you're looking flatbed. for carriers that have, so you're looking for carriers that that, own, that has flatbeds. That, that has a certain equipment, basically. Okay. Yeah. Like, you're going to call them up, like, you're trying to get them to sign your dispatch agreement, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's once I create my okay. own database. Yeah. But I'm saying uh, there's not a way on a trucker's path or any other uh, yeah, platform is. to. Yeah, okay. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. On trucker's path. Let's go to trucker's path. You, you go to your, your, your truck locator, right? On trucker's okay. path. You know, go to trucker's path. You're going to go to your truck locator. So we give you our two types of login on trucker's path. Okay. You're going to go here where it says truck loads. 
Truckloads mm-hmm. for brokers. This is when you are looking for carriers. When you're looking for trucks. Truckloads for carriers is when you're looking for loads. So you're going to go up here, right? Truckloads for brokers. You're going to click that. All right? You're going to log in. Once you log in, you're going to go over here. You're going to click truck search. Right? All right. Equipment. Pull it up. There it is right there. If you want to just do uh, flatbeds, you click flatbeds. If you want to look for just drive vans, you click drive vans. If you want to look for just reefers, you click reefer. If you want to look for just step decks, you click step decks. If you want to look for just power only, you click power only. See what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Is that what you were, that, is this what you were thinking about? You know, I, I got everything down packed, but that was the only thing that was okay. I was looking for. That yeah, one now, now, step right now, there. Yeah, now that's where it is on Trucker's Path. You know, mm-hmm. You can just refer it, you click search, and it's going to pull up just refers in California. Now I can put, you know, all states search. It's going to pull up all the refers that, that, that are listing themselves available for a load. It's running it. It's running it. It's running it. It's going to pull them up in just a second. If my internet had gone out. Oh, there it is right there. There are all the reefers that have made themselves available. Okay? I was going crazy looking area. for that. <laughs> yeah, the I, was going, I was literally going crazy looking for that uh, that section, but when I looked at the broker's part, I said, he said, stay away from broker stuff. So I never clicked into it. That was yeah, the that, one I was that's where you go to look, that's where you go to look, yeah. for, look for trucks at. Now, I have no more questions. Is, Thank you. If you go to this this other one, it's called Quick Transport Solutions. Mm-hmm. You can find them there too. Uh, here we go. Quick Transport Solutions. Okay. Click on that. Take you over here to this one. Quick Transport. On solutions, go to the link. What you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, when you get the quick transport solutions, you're gonna go over. Where did this happen? All right, there we go. When you get the quick transport solutions, you're gonna go to where it says resources. Okay, mm-hmm. you're gonna click on resources. All right, you're going to go to this little red strip over here. You're going to go, go to where it says uh, search trucking companies. All right? Now, you can also mm-hmm. search just re- refrigerated trucking companies. But let's say you just hit the search trucking companies. You want to look at all other trucking companies. Okay? Search trucking companies. And you see, you pull up a state you want to look in. Let's say you want to look in Alabama. And you want to look for... Um, 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 trucks, tractors. Now, this right here is only going to give you. Uh, I thought this one. I thought you could do this by the company name, right? right? Yeah. That's, well, that's what you, I was working with. That one. Yeah. Well, you can, you you don't have to put in. You don't have to put in a company name. I was trying right. to see see if you can pull in. If you can pull up what type of uh, what type of trailer they had, but you can't do it. Interstate. And they got the number of trucks. You can look for the number of trucks they have, which is what you want to do, you know, one to five. But it's not going to tell you. There's no, there's no way for you to set the criteria to only look for, you know, flatbeds or reefers or dry vans on this one. This one you can pull up the truck, but it, but you won't be able to look up and tell you which type of um, 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 truck they have until you click on them. You know, um, until you click on them, and then it'll tell you, you know, what type of truck they have, what, what type of trailer they have. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. General freight you, lumber. You know what a quick. That's gonna be up for that. You know what a quick, um, quick thing I've learned with using this, um, that low board right there. Mm-hmm. When I went to certain other low boards and I found out where it was going from and to. And I went on Google and pulled up the zip code for the area. Mm-hmm. I was able to isolate a lot of trucks yeah. that way, based on the yeah. zip code. Yep, and it worked. Yeah, it worked out. It's based on zip code. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's many different ways to find the things you need. Um, um, yeah. Bottom line is you all have more than enough tools and resources. Oh, yeah. Oh, trust me. Yeah, yes, you, all have, you all have more than enough tools and resources <clears throat> for you all to, you know, find what you need to, to yep. be successful. And and, yep. and, and and that's, you know, the main purpose of what we do. All right? With that yes, being said, thank you. thank you so much. No problem. No problem. With that being said, we're going to call it a night. I, I promised my wife I wouldn't be um, on this past 9 o'clock uh, I'm like I was last night. I was on the same till. All right. Well, take care, Kevin. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay. All so, right. uh, uh, see you all tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for uh, Wednesday night Q and A. So make sure you all have your questions just ready. All right. You all might Thank want you. to start, you know, um, jotting them down tonight, you know, and everything, and have your questions ready for tomorrow on Q and A. All right. Y'all have a good night. All right. Thank you too. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night.